Hey guys, yeah, so there was a lot packed into that news conference, but we do know they're talking about the five shelters that they have open. Now they are saying that these shelters are primarily for people evacuating the coast, but they will not turn anyone away. Now the five are East, South and North Mecklenburg High School, Olympic and Ardry Kell. You can find all the information though you need if you text SHARMEC, all caps, one word, C-H-A-R MEC, to 888-777. We should say a lot of these plans just coming together in the last few hours, a very fluid situation because the forecast changed. It started changing last night around 11 o'clock. Therefore, these city's of, city officials are having to put together plans. At the same time, at the state level, uh, Governor Cooper having a press conference in the last hour as well. And to give you some idea of the scale we're talking about here, the governor's saying, Every single person in every single county in North Carolina needs to be alert and needs to be ready. On the statewide level, there's 16 shelters currently in place, more on the way expected today, as well as 28 Air National Guard members being activated even as we speak. The governor has said he's spoken to the Trump administration and FEMA about how not just before, but also after this thing hits. They're also encouraging everybody to go to the Ready NC app for information. Yeah, you can download that and again, get those updates straight to your phone. I believe his wording was disaster is at the doorstep, you guys. The other big story of the hour right now, that 11 a.m. update that we have come to know. Larry Sprinkle standing by with the details on that. Larry. This is such a huge storm system. It's about 450 miles wide. You can take a look at the satellite and we'll show you the extent of this is we could call it a monster storm. And there's no doubt about it with winds up at uh, category four level as it tracks off moving to the northwest. Now this is the very latest from the National Hurricane Center. Hurricane Florence winds 130 gusting to 160 miles per hour. Still moving at about 15 miles per hour to the northwest, about 520 miles uh, to the east southeast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Notice the track takes it up to uh, Thursday morning, 8 a.m., 145 mile an hour winds. Then as it heads towards the Carolina coastline, a little bit of a turn. You can see this is Thursday night, 8 p.m. Winds still about 140 miles per hour. The cone of uncertainty takes it maybe all the way up towards New Bern. This is Friday morning, 8 a.m., 120 mile an hour winds. That's a category three hurricane that's still sitting off the Carolina coastline just to the uh, southeast of Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, just to the east of those south facing beaches of North Carolina, places like Oak Island, places like that. And then a turn back to the southwest, kind of a dramatic turn as a category two hurricane uh, not too far away from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That is Saturday morning, 8 a.m. with winds at about 100 miles per hour. Then a turn to the northwest and this takes us to Monday morning, 8 a.m. You can see uh, right on top of the upstate of South Carolina, that extreme uh, northwestern corner there, just south of Asheville. So this means a, an impact, certainly on Charlotte, but things have changed dramatically with those hurricane warnings still in effect for the Carolina coastline. Tropical storm watches in effect just to the east of Charlotte. Chances that we could get tropical storm force winds in Charlotte, 61% rainfall amounts, 5 to 10 inches possible right here. So once again, we have seen another kind of dramatic change in the path of Hurricane Florence. Mm -hmm. Okay, Larry, thank you so much. We thank you for that update. Uh, Larry, of course, just mentioned the coast and the impact the storm will have here. Absolutely. Well, NBC Charlotte meteorologist Aisha Scott is in Wilmington with a look at the conditions there and how folks are prepared for this monster storm. There were very few people on the beach this morning, even fewer by the afternoon. That's all because there was a mandatory evacuation put into place earlier this morning. Linda Woodard and her son are cutting their vacation short. Oh yeah, I would never stay here for, for this, you know, not this close. While people like Linda are forced to leave, those who live nearby, they decided to hunker down despite mandatory evacuation orders. Windows are boarded up and sandbags now sit in front of businesses along the coastline here in Wrightsville Beach. <laughs> not only are people buying last minute items for themselves, but also their pets. My first thought that crossed my mind was life jacket in case we flood and she she gets away. There's no denying the strength of Hurricane Florence. Tropical storm force winds expected to reach the coast of North and South Carolina tomorrow morning with hurricane force winds coming into play Thursday night. Storm surge now the big concern as everyone awaits Florence to make landfall. 
just got to take care of your home, your family, and take care of, you know, people you love and take care of your neighbors. Hurricane Florence is still expected to make landfall early Friday morning. As of today, everyone has to be off the island by 8 o'clock tonight. If you do stay, emergency services may not be available to help you. Reporting in Wrightsville Beach, I'm Aisha Scott. Back to you. Well, as Aisha mentioned, thousands of people are packing up and leaving the coast. They're headed right here inland. The Charlotte area is expecting some of those evacuees to seek safety here. That's right. And one of the areas where many people will find safety is at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. That's where NBC Charlotte reporter Rob Hughes. Yeah, Charlotte Motor Speedway is offering up what it can here at uh, the, the campgrounds, and it's just a couple hundred yards away from the actual speedway. It's offering up free spaces for people and campers as well as RVs if they need a place to stay to ride out this storm, specifically evacuees from the coastal areas. They opened their doors yesterday at noon, and like I mentioned, evacuees coming in almost immediately overnight and into this morning, and they expect more in the coming days. One couple I spoke to evacuated from Havelock, North Carolina. Their house is about 200 yards from the Noose River, which in this case is not a good thing based on the current forecast. They say 40 inches of rain could fall in that area, not to mention the storm surge and high winds. Hard to predict what will be left once this storm is over, but with the damage they expect to receive, Bob Walston and his wife say they might be in Charlotte for the next couple of weeks. They're now saying this is going to be worse in Texas flooding and as close as we are to the ocean and water, uh, we won't have a house. I don't feel very confident about it at all. Can't even imagine the Walstons basically resigned to the fact that they probably won't have a home when they return back to Havelock in the next couple of weeks. He described the feeling is heart wrenching. So we're just hoping for the best here at Charlotte Motor Speedway as evacuees continue to ride out what we'll see as Hurricane Florence. Live at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Rob Hughes, we'll send it back to you.